Hey, praise the Lord. This is Brother Dale again. Uh, I'm still on a kick about revival. Uh, what we have today is not revival. And what we've seen about in years past were just incredible. And there's such a vast difference. Why don't we stop and ask ourselves, why is there such a difference? Um... Uh, and I'm talking about the Azusa Street Rival, even, even a Brownsville Revival in Pensacola back in the 90s, Wales, Korea, the Hebrides Islands. I mean, over and over and over again, there was this supernatural outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Well, the question I got is, is that the way it's supposed to be all the time, or is those just a few times where the Lord visits His church to get Him going again, and then He departs? You know, I don't, I don't have the answer to that. I don't know. But I know that whatever we got right now is not good enough. I'm going to read. I'm going to start reading from the book of Judges, chapter six. To me, that this is a picture of revival, right here in the Word of God. There's a problem in Israel. Whenever you see Israel, think the church. Uh, reading from chapter six. It says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And the children of Israel made for themselves dens, the caves, and the strongholds which were in the mountains. In other words, when the enemy came in, the children of God start looking for hiding places. They're no longer up front. They're, you know, they're wandering around. They're covering themselves up. They're no, the Spirit of the Lord's not moving. So it was that whenever Israel had sown, the Midianites would come up, also the Amalekites and the people of the east would come against them, and they'd camp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. In other words, they destroyed the harvest. Now, when we're talking about the Amalekites and the Midianites and all that, we're talking about the world. When you let the enemy into the church... What's the first thing that goes? The harvest. So, souls are no longer coming to get saved because the Spirit of God is no longer moving. Why? Because your church is no longer holy. You have become just like the world. And the first thing that's destroyed, the first sign that you can look at, souls are no longer coming to the altar to get saved. Oh, oh yeah, once in a great while. I mean, I, I can hear some pastors already, oh, praise the Lord, we, we won a soul two weeks ago. Oh, Wow. Boy, that's, that's great. When revival's coming, like it was in the 1970s, we were having so many people come to get saved, we had to have services every single night. And 30, 40, sometimes 50 people would get saved. This is every night. Seven eight days a week, we had eight services because we had two services on Sunday. Month after month, year after year. About 100,000 souls got saved in a matter of about 10 years. Somewhere around that number. Now, tell me, how many souls got saved at your service? And if you're not winning souls, why not? Isn't that the purpose of the church? Isn't that the commission that the Lord Jesus Christ gave you? I mean, is this not, or are we just here to entertain ourselves? One or the other is true. And if it is the great commission of Jesus Christ then we're slightly off the mark here, folks. And maybe we're going to stand in judgment before an almighty God and have to answer why we didn't do what he told us to do. We were so full of church. Let me read some more. So it says here that they would come up with their, they would take over the land and they would let her into the land to destroy it. The purpose of the Amalekites was to destroy the land of God. These worldly preachers and these worldly false prophets, the prophets of peace and love and all that stuff, their purpose is to destroy the holiness, the territory of God, of holiness and righteousness in the fear of God. So greatly was, uh, Israel was greatly impoverished and, because of the Ammonites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when they cried unto him, the Lord sends a prophet. Now, this prophet walks in out of who knows where he came from. He walks in, he looks him dead in the face, and, and he tells him, you know, Lord, he does say, the Lord, I brought you out of Egypt, I did this for you, I did that, all these things for you. And I told you, he says, 
I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But you have not done this. And the prophet turns around and he walks off. Well, hey, well, I thought, I thought the Lord was supposed to take care of all this stuff for us. No. God's a Jew. He makes deals. You broke the covenant. He made a deal with you and you broke the covenant. You didn't do what I told you to do. So, you know, I've delivered you over and over again enough. And he walks away. This is the state of affairs of the church. The Bible says that he that is often reproved shall be destroyed suddenly. You harden your neck off a of reproof. We don't want to hear the prophets. We want to hear all the good stuff. I was listening to some pastor. He had a famous pastor. His father was this great big pastor in New York. You know, a generation ago, he just died lately. And his, his dad was okay. But this guy, you know, he's got a great big following. He is a, uh, the, has the, the grace, this would say, he's grace-orientated messages. So what is that? Well, grace-orientated, in other words, it's all about grace and love and peace. And we don't talk about judgment. Oh, but, you know, we're not, we don't want to judge. Why not? Why, why don't you want to judge? The Bible tells us we're supposed to judge one another. We're supposed to judge ourselves. David said, judge me, O Lord, according to your righteousness. Now, judging doesn't mean I, you're going to go to hell because I, you know, I don't like you or the way you part your hair. But we are supposed to reprove one another, to keep ourselves in the way, so that we walk in the fear of the living God, so that we will be right with God, because God's promises aren't going to come when there is sin in the house of God. Judgment will come instead, and it will begin in the house of God. But when we have allowed the world to come in the church and we no longer preach that old-fashioned message of righteousness and holiness before God, then guess what happens? The Spirit of God begins to move and begins to leave. And you're left with an empty shell. All you got now is a church and a bunch of stories about the generation before and when God was moving. And you never bother to ask yourself, what happened to us? We're missing something. If Mark says that these signs will follow them that believe, show me the signs. Show me the altars where the souls are getting saved. Because the Bible says in John chapter 5, five or chapter 6, I'm sorry, that the, they, nobody comes to repentance unless the, the Father draws them. If the Spirit of God is not drawing souls to your altar every service, every day even, then why is that? Why is the Spirit of God not drawing souls to your altar? You've got to ask yourself. I have, I believe that there are six principles to revival. And I won't go through them all here. But the first two I would like to go through. Number one, I mean, I hear everybody says, oh, they all, everybody wants revival. Revival is not about feeling good or even the miracles or all oh, praise Lord. We all get to start dancing around. We have a wonderful time. The power of the Holy Ghost comes down because those are the stories that we really hearken to when we talk about Azusa Street and some of these other places. Man, that's great. But that is not what revival is about. I've done all those miracles over in Africa for the last 12 years. The blind, the cripple, all that stuff. That doesn't mean I had a revival. Revival is about winning the lost. This is the very secret of revival, and when you lose this, when you, when you no longer pay attention to this, you turn off the faucet to the Spirit of God. All those miraculous things, they are a result of revival. They're not the purpose of revival. Jesus died on the cross, not so you can have a good time, or have a party, make fun with all your friends. Or get rich, praise the Lord, there's going to be a great transference of wealth and we're all going to get rich. Get saved and get rich, praise God, hallelujah, amen. You stinking, phony devils right out of the pits of hell. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Who do you think you're kidding? Because you're not kidding me, you're not kidding God, I'll tell you who else you're not kidding. You're not kidding those people out there in the streets because they're not coming to your church to get saved. The only ones you get are the ones that are greedy, supposing that, greed, uh, that gain is godliness. Those are the ones you're drawing, and the Bible says from such turn away. We got a different message today than we had 
a couple of generations ago. We don't preach fear of God anymore. Oh, you talk about it, but you don't really preach it. You don't live it. And dear God, please don't mention about hell. Preach, get something, starts talking about hell. We go, you know, man, what, why are you preaching hate? Hate? I'll tell you what hate is. When you tell somebody that everything is beautiful and they're going to heaven when they're not. The first principle of revival is that revival is about winning the lost. God sends revival so the world can see that the church has power in the blood of Jesus Christ. That God can deliver them. He can save them. He can change their lives. It's real and it's true. And there's power for those that have a love for righteousness. See, that's the test. That's the test. Do you have a love for righteousness? Or you just want to you know, get out of hell free card? Which is it? Do you, do you love the truth? And you love the fact that there are commandments and there's, there is judgment, there is righteousness with God. Does that appeal to you? Are you looking for something more than what this world can offer you? Or you just want to be entertained? The second principle is like unto the first. And that is that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not about you. It's not going to be about you. If that's why you got saved, I got news for you. The gospel is about others. And until you change your perspective, and until the church turns its 180 degrees, it's not about prosperity or getting rich or having a good time. You guys all going into ministries? One thing I noticed, everybody's going into ministry to minister to each other, and you're running around in circles blessing each other. And you have forgotten that it's not about you. It's not about having a great church. It's about winning the lost for Jesus Christ. This is the purpose of revival. And you can't go any further. You can talk all you want, but you can't go any further than that until you get this thing square in your mind, in your heart, and in your soul. Dear God, send a revival. Not so I can just sing and dance. I'll sing and dance for eternity. But right now, dear God, send us laborers because the harvest is ripe. Send us people have a burden for the lost that are willing to fast and pray. Not once a week. Every day, dear God, desperate God, send us souls. Give us the cry of Rachel. Rachel's cry in Genesis chapter 30, verse 1. He, she looked at her sister. She envied her sister Leah. She saw that she bare Jacob no children. And she cries, gets a hold of her husband. Give me children or else I die. That's the desperation that the church has to have. When you're a not winning souls, you are a barren woman and it is a shame unto you. Shame on you that you make excuses of why your empties are bare. Your, your altars are bare. Shame on you. Give me souls, God, lest I die. How bad do you got to want it? Bad enough to die. Bad enough to give your life so that souls can be saved. It's what Jesus did. And he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. Secret of revival is winning the lost. Pray for God to give you a burden. Praise the Lord. This is Brother Dale with fire in the hole. Amen.